Now, the biggest question I have been receiving since Tuesday has been, Kevin, what are your thoughts on Halo Infinite Season 3 update? And is this the update that will save Halo? And did you know that 62% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel? If you guys want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo Season 3 and beyond, make sure you tap subscribe. If you want to know about the good, the bad, and most certainly the ugly when it comes to Season 3's update, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So let's talk about the big ticket items that are gonna make you wanna jump in and play this game because we have three new multiplayer maps of Cliffhanger, Chasm, and Oasis. Chasm was a nice little sneaky addition that was added in last minute with this season. And I even asked you guys on my poll here on my community page, if you wanna cash these, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let you know when the next time these go live. And with almost 4,000 votes with this poll guys, 58% said that Oasis is the best map within this update, second with Cliffhanger, Chasm finishing last. The general sentiment I've seen for these new maps from the community is that not a lot of people are liking Chasm. Personally though, I've been enjoying the map. Thanks to today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM are a team of artists and creators who share a common vision. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Since 2012, they developed premium apparel that elevates self-expression and provides unparalleled comfort for wherever your passions take you. Into the AM recently sent me some apparel to check out and honestly guys, I'm really enjoying this stuff. I like the art style they put on the shirts and I also got some cool joggers that go with it that fit me really well. If you're not into all the crazy styles, don't worry, they have some simple tees for you as well. They fit great, they feel great, and I genuinely do enjoy their products. If you use my code KevinCollects, you receive an additional 10% off of your purchase. Plus, I get a little kickback and help support the channel as well. Into the AM has been a long time sponsor of the channel, and I genuinely do enjoy their products a lot. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you much Into the AM for sponsoring the video. So let's get right back into those details. I think it's a really cool, nice change of pace when it comes to it. Maps within Halo Infinite, a lot of them are like three lane, competitive focus kind of maps. And Chasm looks to break that mold that 343 has been making with their arena maps. And definitely from playing it multiple times over, I can tell you it's not a competitive map. It's very social. And yeah, I can agree with the community that it's not a good map, but it's actually a fun map in my opinion, because it's designed to kind of give you some weird, unique experiences that you wouldn't have in a normal, like competitive style map. So modes like Team Slayer, CTF, now seeing the King of the Hill location for the Chasm, not a good one. But I think Chasm is a great social map for things like Fiesta or Escalation Slayer that we've been playing. So while not a good map, it's an appreciated change of pace when it comes to map design, aesthetic, and playability. Cliffhanger, I've been really enjoying as well. It's a bit larger of an arena map, definitely designed with social in mind. I love the aesthetic. I think it plays out rather well. It's large enough to where you don't have to get overwhelmed by players, but small enough to where you don't feel like you're searching for action. I think this map plays out best on hill game modes like king of the hill or strongholds or even ctf that we've been playing with this map and i'm currently loving oasis right now i love how different it plays out the amount of freedom of movement that vehicles have on this map is such a much needed change of pace when it comes to the BTB maps currently within Halo Infinite. Because all four maps that were in the game already were very lane focused. You didn't really have much movement available for you as a vehicle player. Like try driving a tank on deadlock. It's not easy. And the dev stated that you should be able to drive a Warhog with pretty much most of the locations on the map. And for after playing it, yeah, you definitely can do that. I love the aesthetic. It's a really fun map. I think Oasis is going to be a top tier map for BTB. Now Escalation Slayer is a fun mode. I mean, we've played it previously within the MCC, so you know it's kind of a guaranteed win. Everybody likes playing gun game. I do like what they did with the loadouts within this mode, where I think it gives you a nice creativity and just kind of wacky, fun kind of experience. I was kind of curious how the team aspect will play out, but the team version of it is also really fun because we've only really ever played gun game as a free-for-all mode. And at, the tank, and at the time of making this video, we haven't played the BTB version yet, so that's gonna be real crazy. If they throw in some vehicles in there, well then it's gonna be just nutty. Now, if there's a team escalation slayer place, am I jumping in to play it? Most likely not, but it's not really just for me. It's much more of a social casual kind of Fiesta fan kind of mode. Uh, I like to play ranked when it comes to 4v4 or play big team battle. So while a nice addition, nothing really that would make me want to jump in and play Halo. Next big ticket we got to talk about is the battle pass. I think there's some really good changes and additions they made into this. Yeah, there are some tiers that are like XP channel swaps, but there's actually a lot more content within this battle pass than we've ever had previously. Over here on Reddit, somebody actually made a battle pass comparison between season one, 
two and three. One thing with season three that they added that the previous seasons don't have is that you have a purchase bonus armor coating that came with this battle pass, which I think is a great addition. We actually do have more challenge swaps. We have a lot more emblems. We do have four fewer helmet attachments compared to season two, 12 less when it comes to shoulder pads, but we also have 22 more weapon coatings compared to last season's battle pass. And the overall object count is actually considerably more with 193 items compared to 179 items. So technically you're gaining more bang for your buck with season three's battle pass than we've had with season one or two. Most of the content that's in the past seems pretty interesting. I'm liking the new coatings, especially for like the Hydra and the Bulldog shotgun, which definitely needs some coatings. But the overall experience I think is Pretty much standard what we've had previously some coding some armors overall solid pass if you're into the customization side of things of halo infinite definitely worth jumping into so the battle pass will kind of segue us right into the customization updates that we came with season three and we didn't really get much in the way of updates with this i'm sure a lot of us are waiting on cross core coatings more cross core customization like helmets and things like that and we didn't get anything which is kind of surprising since we've had so long since season two where you could drop in a new update we have cross core visors still but we would like to see some progress made well that's the official bit of news we've heard from 343 saying they are looking to stray away from the core system probably not completely remove it but some news recently came out which was very interesting as it appears 343 3 is looking to sell coatings here that are cross core essentially you see this adrift sapphire yoroi coating right here but then you go one over and you see the adrift sapphire for the spi mirage core and it's like dude I, and they're charging 500 credits for this coating right here so if people buy this and eventually cross core coatings do come into the game well that's going to be a bit of a conflict some of the new customization options that we have for the mirage core that some of them do look pretty awesome very true to the original core but some of them are very very wacky. We even have some Halo 5-esque armor types within this battle pass right now. But for some reason for me, when it comes to this Mirage Core, I kind of like them. Like even though the Street Viper looks kind of weird, I kind of like it at the same time. It looks like with Season 3's customization, they're looking to branch out a little bit more on the wacky side of things, like we have with Halo 4 and Halo 5's customization. But they still made it look like it would fit within Halo Infinite's aesthetic, so it's kind of like a Halo Infinite version of the Halo 5 armor. But I know some people like the more weirder, wacky Halo 5 style armor sets and I think this battle pass and customization we're getting is a nice mix of people who like the more traditional armor sets compared to the people who like the more newer armor sets. So with this season it's a little bit of something for everybody in Halo. Next we have to talk about the Chimera Core. This is the Fracture Core so things are gonna get a little wacky with it and I think it looks all right. Some things look kind of funky like for example are these helmets like this helmet kind of looks okay. I actually kind of like this helmet. I think it looks kind of like a skull or something like that kind of like we had like an MCC but like a more Spartanized version of it. This helmet, I don't know what this is, but I mean, it, it's something. The cool thing about this core though, is that a lot of the chest pieces are tied to the visor. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go with this action line visor here so I can really show you what I'm talking about. So if I want to select a chest piece, it actually uses the visor, which is actually a really cool, interesting bit of customization. It's not gray. There are even some shoulder pads that take advantage of this kind of stuff as well. Though my biggest issue with these fracture cores is that there usually isn't a whole lot of customization unless you're willing to pay for it. Now I feel like these fracture cores are just like a huge missed opportunity because to me they don't really excite me a whole lot the yoroi was kind of cool the iron strike one was okay i didn't really care for it i mean this chimera core can look kind of cool at times there's some interesting bits of customization that they did with this but i'm just not like super into really kind of wacky weird looking armor sets i'm more of a fan of the traditional stuff i feel like fracture cores are a perfect opportunity to bring in maybe some crossover stuff that we see other live service games do like call of duty's putting in shredder from ninja turtles into the game recently fortnite is just littered with crossovers all over why can't halo do that i did this poll recently on my channel got over 6k views like shout out to worsenage if i pronounced the name correctly for the art right here but i thought like what if the mandalorian was in halo what would you like to see a halo version of the mandalorian or the straight up copy of the mandalorian 81 percent you guys say i want to see like a halo version of it like a rock shasha core of this mandalorian set which i think would look really freaking awesome. I feel like having the opportunity to have crossover cores from different franchises in the Halo would interest people a lot more than what this is over here. So will I be rocking the Chimera core throughout the season? Probably not. I can see its appeal, but it's just not my cup of tea. We also have to talk about the narrative event. This is where the biggest improvement within the previous seasons actually happened because this narrative event is actually something that's intriguing and wants to make you want to play Halo and figure out what's going on. Because season two's narrative event was go play multiplayer. The second half of it was just 
go play multiplayer. Or this one, it actually does feel like there's something at stake. We actually get to see what Eratus did to Din and why that banished AI is such a dangerous bit of equipment. The cutscenes are fantastic. I love how your sparring gets integrated with these cutscenes. It's super cool. And another thing I'm really enjoying is that these narrative events actually affect the world of Halo that you're playing in right now. As we saw within the second half of the narrative event that the bottom mid door on Lifefire had a grenade blow off in front of it, blast, blast off some paint and showcase it was an Oni door. And when you stand next to that door within multiplayer, there's a weird portal sound that's happening that was added with this update. Okay, that's interesting. And also on the map Cliffhanger, when you're playing on Escalation Slayer, there are these weird red holograms that are happening within the skybox and on the map. It feels like something is happening within the world, like a true live service, like an actual event is happening. Now, 343 devs have stated that these narrative events are actually going to have major lore implications when it comes to the story of Halo. And I think finally, after almost a year and a half after launch, we're finally seeing the tip of that lore iceberg. The second half of the narrative event should be coming out later in May. We'll definitely cover it on the channel here. The shop might be one of the most controversial things added within Halo because this is the first time we've gone to a free to play model with significant microtransactions within the game. And we've seen some real peaks and valleys when it comes to sentiment to the shop. At first, it was pretty awful. They've made improvements. They've made some flubs, but they've also got some dubs. They implemented like this value pack thing where now you're getting two armor sets for the price of one, basically, essentially with 2200 credits. But the thing is that the customization that's in there while the armor does look awesome some of the coatings were just very basic like the one mirage core that's just white with black undersuit like you're gonna make me pay 20 dollars for white i feel like the mirage core coating right there should be in the battle pass at most and i just feel like dropping like 20 plus dollars on micro a single microtransaction within halo just feels a bit eh. like also kind of plays on fomo a little bit because 343 stated that they will divide out that package into individual core sets but then they'll be priced a little bit higher so it's like if you want to buy this get the deal now kind of thing now it wouldn't be a 343 update if there weren't some odd decisions being made one being that the pit was completely removed from the most popular playlist within the game quick play the previous game modes that were available on the map like high power have been removed along with some some weird bugs like the xbox right now where you're trying to play at 120 frames it gets really framey and weird same kind of thing happens when you try to interact with the customization within halo Infinite. it's really framey and choppy going in and out of customization which leads to what a lot of people have also been experiencing are a lot of extra crashes now at the time of making this video the halo support did say that they're looking to put out a patch addressing a lot of issues right now but details of when and what is in that patch has not been revealed it's just kind of a shame because it feels like every time there's a major update or there's any kind of major changes where you have to download a patch for the game something's going to break some people can't even load into the game with the season 3 update now me personally i haven't had any issues with crashing the game's been seeming to work out rather well and also within my twitch chat people talk about their issues with halo infinite at the moment which can be an incredibly frustrating thing when you just want to jump in and play some halo and the game's like no, we're not doing that. We have to talk about the new sandbox items that came in with this, the Bandit Rifle and the Shroud Scream. Sorry with the Bandit Rifle. I did an analysis video already on the channel if you guys want to check it out. Comparing it with the Battle Rifle because a lot of people have been talking about wanting to have the Bandit Rifle take over the Battle Rifle as a starting weapon. And right now, I would say no. And the main thing is because it doesn't have D-scope with the Bandit Rifle because it uses that 1.4 times zoom, the same kind of zoom you have with the Sidekick or the Assault Rifle. And I do not want to have Halo 4 multiplayer PTSD kick into my Halo Infinite multiplayer experience. But overall, I think the Bandit Rifle actually sits really well within the sandbox right now. It's not redundant to the Battle Rifle like it was within Halo 5 and Halo 4 sandbox. It's more accurate and a little bit more effective over range than say like the Commando Rifle. And there's definitely a solid skill gap with it because I actually struggle to use the bandit. There's a good amount of kick with it that especially kind of starts happening within like the fourth or fifth shot. And especially in the later half of that magazine, the recoil really kicks in. So right now the battle rifle is definitely still king when it comes to precision weapons at range or really any range at all. But the battle rifle definitely has its advantages and some disadvantages compared to the battle rifle. I'm happy that it's not just a nostalgia bait weapon added in just to get people going like I remember Reach. It actually has a unique spot within the sandbox that I think deserves to be there. Right now I think it's good as a pickup weapon 
weapon. Though, as a starting weapon, we could possibly make it work for big team battle. With that 1.4 times zoom, you're not gonna really have people sniping you across the map like you did in Reach, Halo 4, and Halo 5. That vertical recoil is really gonna reduce its effective range as well. And with the longer distance and engagements that you have within big team battle, I think the bandit rifle could really start out well with like a bandit rifle AR start. I actually would be all for that when it comes to big team battle. Now, a credible leaker of Sir Asia that we've quoted multiple times on the channel here said that season three will have BTP starts with a bandit and assault rifle, but obviously we didn't have that within BTP. But I have a feeling this has a grain of truth tied to it. And maybe with the BTP unlimited playlist coming within the second week of season three, you never know, we could see it happen. Let's talk about that shroud screen that was added in. This is the first time Halo has had a smoke grenade type of equipment within the game. And honestly, this thing is freaking awesome. It plays out so well within Halo Sandbox. It's such a natural addition. It really opens up different gameplay styles and different things that could happen within Halo Infinite's gameplay. You can use it as an aggressive tool where you can place it like on a hill and then move to that hill to try and get some hill time. You can use it as a defensive tool where you may block lines of sight and stuff like that. You can use it as a way to try to get away from a bad situation that you're in. I've used it previously within one of my videos where I was getting attacked in big team battle, shot a shroud screen down, ran to cover, and I got out scot-free. Dude, this map is freaking gorgeous. Just look at this, man. This is amazing. Get it all, get the bubble shit out of here. Shroud screen, I mean, get that double. Yeah. Oh my God, I completely love the shroud screen in this game already. Just that one instant alone makes me go, okay, this definitely deserves to be in Halo. With the shroud screens addition within some ranked modes, it's actually a great addition where it makes like some locations very viable places to go to or actual places you can actually capture points. Like saying playing King of the Hill with that middle hill that's on streets, it's a complete suicide zone. Like it's just death all over the place. You're getting shot from all the angles, all the grenades, throw a shroud screen down to either block lines of sight or cover yourself on top of the hill, it actually provides a lot of benefit to you. With these additions, it makes me excited to see like what else 343 is gonna be working on when it comes to new stuff coming in, especially for equipment. Last time we saw there was a quantum translocator will kind of help you go from point A to B. With how well the shroud screen works within the sandbox of Halo Infinite, it makes me excited to see what else 343 has in store. We do know about the quantum translocator, which will kind of help teleport you around the map from one point to another. We'll see exactly how it plays out in the future though. But I've never seen such a welcomed addition to the sandbox of Halo. Loving the bandit rifle, loving the shroud screen. Awesome additions. All right, now drum roll, please. Did this update save Halo? And the answer is no. All right, let's check out the Steam charts, guys. There's an indication of how the population at large kind of plays. Obviously, the numbers are kind of low on Steam. But keep in mind, we have Xbox numbers and Game Pass numbers we look at. And you see a nice little spike right here with the launch of Season 3 hit just under 13,000 peak concurrent player count. Nothing to start ranting and raving over, but it's a nice little peak. And the last time I saw that high of a player count was back in November of 2022. But the big thing about this season is that it's the first major step in the right direction for Halo Infinite's future. Personally, this would have been an amazing update if it came out one year ago. But we are where we are right now. And I'm glad to see that 343 is making some good progress when it comes to making Halo Infinite be an actual live service. The general sentiment that I've been seeing within my Twitch chat, with my comments, between tw Twitter and Reddit and everything else is that everyone's basically kind of saying that like, finally, it's a bit late, but at least it's something. But I think with Halo Infinite, we're not gonna see any gr drastic changes when it comes to population or sentiment until that t rumor Tatanka mode comes out eventually. But I think you'll start seeing sentiment towards Halo really change once we have that season four update coming out at the end of June. Because we as players have never truly experienced a live service Halo yet. Because right now players are kind of feeling like this is just another way overdue update. But I guarantee you when season four rolls around, people are like, oh, a new update this soon? This is great. Season five rolls around and be like, oh, this is like what it's going to be like playing Halo now. I'm jumping back in. So I don't think there's ever going to be one update that saves Halo. There needs to be some big new flashy thing that come into the game that get people excited about like infection coming in with season four. That's the current leak and rumor right now that yeah, it's a nice addition, year and a half too late in my opinion, and it's more to service a niche community. But if we're talking about a big mode, like say a battle royale called Tatanka coming into Halo Infinite, where well, you're gonna get a lot more eyes on Halo Infinite at that point, which my guess would come around season six, most likely at the absolute earliest season five. And by that point, we should have some new changes, some new updates some bug fixes and things like that, where by the end of this year, I think Halo Infinite is going to be quite an awesome multiplayer game. 